Yes guys, and a welcome from me, this is Championship Manager 0102, it's a preview save game coming up, part 3 of Gary Johnston's Dusseldorf save, now I've literally, literally just downloaded this because I had to request access and moved it into my folder, so, um, yeah, there you go, that is the one, okay, I've no clue what to expect, uh, I'm guessing we've come to the end of season 3, we did speak about, um, Right, perfect timing then. Yeah, he's done it at the end. That I'm guessing he's done that right at the Champions League. Okay, Gary Johnson. I'm assuming you're still Dusseldorf. Yep. Top flight. Oh, oh that was brutal. That is harsh. Okay, that is harsh. I finish it. I would say to finish second, I think he's uh, exceeded expectations. There's no doubt about that. But let's just let, uh, do I dare. We'll look at this. Right, okay. Let's see where, let's see. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is brutal. The penultimate game of the season. So the penultimate game of the season, he drew a Bayern Munich. So that's been costly. That is, oh my God. That is fucking harsh. Let, I've got to look at that. Mm. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I'm a bit, bit speechless on you there, um, Gary. So, knocked out the cup early on, it would appear, to Werder Bremen on penalties. Oh, I'd be fucking seething at that. I would not accept that. Jesus Christ. It, I mean, the bottom line is on penalties in CM, it's coin flip. And I guess it's pretty much coin flip in real life as well. But the good thing about what Gary has set up, and I have the same setup as a lot of people do, they have the fourth column attributes. So... You can see someone's penalty taking uh, ability. Now, I think there's a big element of just luck involved in when they hit it, to be honest with you. Uh, they, you know, you can set them up, I don't know, who knows. Okay, so let's talk about Gary's team. Um, so the signings in that came in, three minutes from Dortmund. Did he, was that his old player? It was, ah, oh, I thought so. We said, didn't we? I remember saying about this. Um, I'm surprised though he didn't get in for cheaper. He didn't get in for any more. Well, look at his money. His money was a big issue, weren't it? Uh, Bosovic. 10 games looking good. That Bosman. Oh, that Bosman has done really, really well. I mean, he's steadied the ship, hasn't he? That's. I'm assuming that's the idea. Uh, Diamico from Lille. 700 grand. Don't think he'd be too happy of him. I don't think he will be at all. Uh, Almeida from Palmer. 1.2. Again, done well, but I think it's really going to be depend on what your money situation is like, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, pretty decent, pretty decent. Fabio Costa probably has not had as much game time as what he would have. Oh, is that? Oh, look at that! Oh, what a player! What a player! As I refer it, Giza. What a fucking player! He is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm very, very familiar with him. Can't always, don't get him as much as I'd like to because there's a lot of strikers. And even in the short period of time that he's played, which I don't know if there's another reason behind that, but look at that, five games, four goals, eight, six, oh, what a fucking player. Oh, you had him last? Oh, right, okay. Right, now this is the problem about uh, Germany. When you move them into your resis for whatever reason, and then you move them back, it resets it. So actually... Uh, yeah, he had more than five games, didn't he? Because look, he brought him there, and he had. Um, then he moved into the resis. Oh, that was the resis that that he got right. Okay, I'm a little bit confused by that, to be honest with you. Why does it say five and four right there? Five goals, five games, four goals. Don't quite know why they've done that. Because look, oh, I don't know. Who gives a shit? But what a player, Gary. That is a great player. Uh, Mats Rubarth from AIK. Nah, you'll be, you'll be pissed off with him. You'll be hacked off with him. Uh, Fedorov, 100 grand. Uh, decent player. Uh, see, I like versatility, but they never seem to perform the real versatile ones. Um, okay, yeah, I, I recognise this guy. Um, he, he, he's actually very good. I'm surprised, actually. I thought he might have done. Well, he might have had more game time, but he's very, very good. Um, the next one, the forward. The but re, you really like the Belarusians, don't you, uh, Gary? He's a good, solid player there. 
got him on a Bosman. Very, very impressive. And finally, Ness Mashini, a Ukrainian left back. I like him. I rate him. I think he's, I think he's absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. Okay, let's take a look at his money. Okay, well, that's not a good sign, is it? <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. It, it, it's the upper scale now. So let's just uh, see what players went then. See what players went for big money. No one went for massive money, did they? I'm sure he's keeping an eye. Yeah, he's keeping an eye on Nicky Ferenko. Um, it's. I actually thought he might have more money. Okay, let's look at Bos. So he's got a Bosman coming from Verdi, the Japanese. Yeah, look at that. I think the key attribute there on that player is passing. I think midfield centre. I remember on my free man, I had a midfield centre, and I've got one on my current free man actually. He had passing 20, tackling 20, and finishing 20, bizarrely. He was a midfield centre, and he was absolutely insane. Uh, let's just remind ourselves now then what um, Gary is playing tactic wise. Oh, he has changed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, I didn't know he changed it on this particular save. Now, I like this. Um, Matt, you may recall, if you're watching this, Matt, you may recall I had a very similar formation, but mine was with... Uh, what was it? Was it mine? Did I have some arrows or something, Matt? Was it something like... Did I have some arrows? I think it was something like that. Something like that. I, I like that, Gary. I, I really like that. Um, let's just have a look at your last game then. So, 7-2. to two. Yeah, you've been playing it. You know, I, I genuinely do really like that. So, um, very, very interesting indeed. Let's have a look then who Gary's star out man was for this campaign. Um, well, we can't really count him, can we? Because he's only had a few games. Javier Cruz. Cruz, I mean, Cruz has done well. He don't look the bollocks, does he? That's a problem sometimes. You go by the look of someone. I'm doing it like this. I should really do it like this, shouldn't I? I should really do it like that. Okay. Okay, I mean, he, he's been superb, hasn't he? He really has been superb. Oh, yeah, he's still got him. Okay, so... Question now, then, for Gary... I uh, forget what he did answer, didn't I? Didn't he about what I said the objective was for his next season? He's going to be in the Champions League, which is massive. That's going to bring some um, well-needed resources and money into the um, into the club. Um, he's going to need some players, and let's have a look if he's got any bids in for players. Uh, oh, Barga! I remember Barga. What a player! Uh, he's got no bids in. Byron Bub. Mm. Ah, look at that. The, the, I love this guy. I mean, Gary first found this guy. Uh, the, the Mo Salah pre-gen, we call him. Um, Gary, quick question. Um, to be honest with you, I don't ever do this. You, I can see you're scouting him. For what purpose or reason do you scout? Is it to get any more information on him? Because obviously the, the, the problem is, load up a game... And you already know who you, what he's like, for whatever reason, from a previous save. So I just wonder if there's any other reason. The other reason I think people would use scouts as well is if you've got attribute masking on. I'm sure you haven't, Gary. Uh, I have. In fact, we can see. No, he hasn't. I, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't have it on. I don't have attribute masking on. I don't see the point, uh, personally. Um, yeah, I'd love to see him uh, sign for you. I think he's at, it doesn't look great. But his attributes are massive in certain areas, which uh, contribute towards how well he does. Not a true reflection, I know, but still think um, he'd be a worthwhile acquisition. Um, yeah, okay. No, no one else of interest. I think we should look though. Let's have a look. I'm sure, he's. I'm sure. Oh, look at that. You must have seen that, Gary. Look at that. 180 grand release clause. I can't ever fucking pronounce his name. So we'll call him Marchin. Um, absolutely fucking brilliant. You've got to get you've got to get him. I insist. Oh Rayard's got one. He's got a 1.4. Okay. See if the scouts told me uh, they don't think he's a great player, I don't believe it. Look, you know, we know that from Sigalko. 
Okay, potentially two massive players there. The problem is, this is a big problem, particularly on the um, Marchin. Marchin is not a midfield forward. He's a, an attacking forward. So he'd only be able to play really up here unless you're out of put, put him totally out of position. So that's probably why uh, Gary's a bit reluctant because of this new formation. Unless he's got plans to change formation, who knows? Um, oh, no, I can't get to it. So... That is part three. Gary, keep them coming. Keep them coming. We want to see what the next season holds for you. Uh, for me, I would say an assault on the title. But I think you've got to be realistic. I, based on that squad there, it's still not strong enough, I don't feel, to compete. Which puts you under no pressure. It really doesn't. I mean, you've only got to look at... Um, you've only got to look at... His lineup like that. I mean, Sanchez is the highest value player. Is that an auto value? No, it's not. I didn't think so. For example, I'm guessing he had an offer in for Antonio Sanchez, why he's valued at nine million pounds. Seven seven spot five looks like the highest then. Um, and then if we look at Dortmund for a minute and see what their highest value is, you see there's a big, big difference, massive difference. Right, that is it, guys. Uh, Gary, thank you. Keep us updated for part four. Until next time from me, guys. Take it easy.